Welcome. This is the fifth in my series of three-minute climate mythbusters, and the myth I'm going to bust today is that the climate is cooling. So what's their evidence? Well, sometimes it's just that it snowed somewhere. They also tend to use short-term fluctuations to imply long-term trends, which as we have seen before, is completely invalid. And the last argument they often use is that the sun is fading, it's either producing less energy or less magnetic fields, and thus the earth is going to be tipped over into a new ice age. So one day it snowed somewhere. So does this mean that global warming is over? Not at all. In fact, snow doesn't even indicate record low temperatures, it just indicates that it's precipitated in a place where the temperature was at or below zero degrees centigrade. Your local weather is not necessarily an indicator of long-term global climate trends. That would still only represent 0.0005% of the global climate. Daily changes in weather need to be averaged over decades to get a climate trend. So that would represent 0.009% of a climate trend. Put those two together and your local weather on any given day represents 0.000000000. 5% of a global climate trend. In other words, it's completely useless. There are way more new high temperature records set each month than low temperature records set, which means we have a warming planet. The sun is dying, we're all going to freeze to death. We've heard that refrain many times before and I've debunked it many times before, but let's quickly just go into the reasons why it's nonsense. Yes, there is a downward trend at the moment in solar activity. That's because we're in the decay phase of solar cycle 24 and that's exactly when solar activity decreases. There has been a longer term trend in sunspot number to lower numbers over the last 70 years. I've shown this many times before, but does that mean we're going into a new Maunder minimum? Probably not. And if it does, does it mean that we've got an ice age on the way? Is the Thames going to freeze over? Is a new tourist attraction in London going to be frost fairs on the Thames? I doubt it. Here's the downward trend that I was talking about before. But we've had two downward trends like that before. Here's one at the middle of the 19th century, and here's one at the end of the 18th century. Did either of those result in a Maunder minimum? No. Did either of those result in an ice age? No. So this really says that this is just so much alarmism on the part of uh, those that are preaching about a colder climate due to uh, a fading sun. Those that are predicting a cooling trend from our climate are thinking short term. They like to take the raw data and then find a nice high point like the 1998 El Nino event and then find some subsequent year that is colder and say, oh, look, there's a cooling trend. But I could go equally a year after 1998. The problem with this graph is there's lots of fluctuations and those fluctuations are caused by things like La Nina and El Nino and volcanic eruptions and possibly a little bit by the sun. But we can calibrate those effects out. And when you do that, this is what you get. A strong warming trend for the last 30 years. Let's for a moment pretend that thermometers were never invented. What would be our understanding of what's going on with our planet at the moment? Well, here are top 10 signs of a warming world according to NOAA. And if we had no thermometers, six of those indicators would still be valid. Plus we'd have the changing of the flowering dates of various flowers and trees. The first frost is getting later in the year. The last frost of the winter is getting earlier each year. So we therefore have a longer growing season. The planting zones for various plants are moving towards the poles. And the migration of various animals are also changing. And those animals have no idea of about thermometers or what NOAA or NASA data is saying. They're just going on the instinct based on the local temperatures. So all of these indicate that we have a warming world, not a cooling world. Let's get back to using thermometers again. And if you look at the record of global temperatures decade by decade, you can see that every decade since 1950 has been warmer than the previous one. So that indicates we have a warming planet and uh, it's likely we will continue to have a warming planet for the foreseeable future, at least until we come to our senses and start to do something about it. Until next time, goodbye.